Hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hey, guys. hey we're back doing plant chats know, because right? it's Plant Chat Friday. You know how much we love plants and flowers just yeah. like you guys, so we're excited to be featuring oh, yeah. the creeping zinnia today. Yep, here she is, here they are. So today we're going to cover basic plant care. We're also going to cover then deadheading and then we're going to go into companion plants. All right, let's get started. Let's do this. All right, guys, so first off, this is the creeping zinnia. This is the Mexican creeping zinnia, also known as San Vitalia procumbens or procumbens and this is in the Asteraceae family the daisy family because it's got these nice little daisy flowers and it's got a lot of them now these are fun these aren't true zinnias though which is really cool they look like zinnias they look like miniature zinnias to me anyway and I think to Allison too so they got these tiny little flowers right and they got these beautiful leaves these leaves look like zinnia leaves um, they're just super miniature really tiny maybe about an inch which is characteristic of these uh, these creeping zinnias these Mexican creeping zinnias and so they're hardy in zones 9a to 11b but they're actually grown as an annual so they're not not really hardy in our area we're growing them we bought these these are new to us this year and we're growing them in our yard as annuals and so they're really really beautiful and they're super easy to take care of and Allison will tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute so they need full sun but they'll do okay in part sun they need regular watering and they need to be in well draining soil if they sit in really wet soil for too long they'll actually rot they're actually susceptible to botrytis Phytophthora and Rhizoctonia. So these are all of kind of decaying uh, root or, or stem diseases, funguses. And so you don't want to, you want to make sure that they don't stay too wet for too long, if at all. Now you're probably wondering how big and how large are these plants going to get? Well, they're mounding, they're, they're a creeping type of plant. They don't get that big, but they do a, they do a really good job of filling in about a space of about, about 12 inches to 18 inches wide. And that's from like on center of the plant out and then they'll get about six to eight inches tall. Now there might be other varieties or other different species of San Vitalia that look very similar to this, but they could actually get bigger or smaller. So just be aware of that when you're looking at that information and uh, trying to fit it to your garden. Now, these guys like to flower from about mid to late spring all the way into the fall to the first frost because when frost hits, they're not hardy. You're going to see them die back pretty fast after that. And so they flower pretty much all basically summer and it's really cool. I mean, that's a long time to bloom. And so what you're seeing here too is these beautiful little yellow flowers and they'll actually, this is the only color that these actually come in, this species come in that we know of. Oh, and lastly, I wanted to tell you uh, these are native to the southwest of the United States and Mexico so there's other varieties that are uh, native to Central or South America but this species the procumbens Samantalia are native to southwest United States and Mexico all right now some maintenance these guys, they don't actually need to be deadheaded, which is super cool, right? That makes them really low maintenance. They just need water and sunlight and decent draining soil. So if you really want to deadhead your San Metalia, this is how you do it. Get in here and you're going to need your straight long snips here. And we'll have a link down below for you. These are Corona. We'll have a link down below. You can go check those out. So these are great little snips. They just... They really, they're really good for getting into tight little places. And so you're going to want to come down and look at your San Metalia here. And one thing you can look for is this guy right here. This is what's left of a flower, actually. These are the sepals underneath the petals and the rest of the flower. You can see right here, it's got, it's just got the sepals there, the remnants of the flower, and then it goes down the stem here to more of the structure. We're going to take our straight long snips. And we're just going to bring them in here, go down to the base of that attachment of that little flower and we're just going to clip that off and now it's been deadheaded now if you keep right there you can see there's still a flower here off that stem that's still flowering and then there's a new one coming in right here so it's a good thing that we clipped it where we did so now we still can enjoy this flower and then keep the one that's coming in and continue those flowers so let's look for another one maybe here here's here's one right here as you can see that it's got some of the petals left, but it's it's on its way out. So what we're going to do here is, is I'm going to take my snips and do this left-handed. Come down as close as I can. Get my snips in there and just do that. There we go. And now we've clipped that off. We've still got this flower here and all these rest of these growing points for more flowers later in the season. And that's how you deadhead your San Mentalia. I'm going to go through and get a couple more. And so uh, you guys just take it easy, sit here and watch me cut these.
All right, looks like I got most of those out of there. Now Allison's gonna talk to you a little bit more about companion plantings and some other great uh, pieces of information about this plant. Okay, you guys, so I am excited to talk to you about some uses for this really cute little plant and also maybe some companion plants. So basically you can see how we're using it in this vertical planter. Um, we have it. We have two plants kind of um, staggered in these little trough kind of planters, but we're treating them like containers, right? So one use for this plant is a container or any type of hanging basket or even like a window box. That would look so cute, designed with other sun-loving annuals. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Another use for this plant, you could, um, since it does spread, but it's kind of a lower grower, you could use it on along a walkway, you know, and maybe like plant a whole bunch of them spaced out so that you kind of form a mat almost along a walkway. I think that would look really cute. So in addition to along a walkway, you could, I mean, basically you're using it as edging, right? So that's another use. You could kind of edge it along any pathways or walkways. Now, like Sean mentioned earlier, these need to be planted in part to full sun. So remember to keep that in mind wherever you end up placing these. And the final use that might be fun and kind of similar to walkways or edging, but you could just straight up use this as a ground cover. Maybe you have a whole flatter area that you just kind of want this to spread out and take over. Maybe mix it in with some petunias or another type of summer kind of lower annual that spreads. That would be really pretty. So another thing to keep in mind, kind of along with the uses of this plant is um, this plant is a pollinator attractor. Um, you'll typically see some butterflies. We're still on the lookout for that. We've read that in our literature, but we haven't seen that yet. So we're hopeful. Um, also, these are deer resistant, which if you live in deer prone area, you know that they might sample these plants. So just keep that in mind. They're not deer proof. Nothing is really deer proof, right? but these are supposed to supposedly deer resistant. So that's nice. Um, another awesome feature is they're heat tolerant. These plants can withstand a lot of heat and do okay in the, you know, that kind of climate. So that might be a really good choice for those of you that have really hot summers. So next, we're gonna talk about companion plants. And I mean, there's like kind of a whole bunch of stuff in here, but the things that are directly next to our creeping zinnias, um, we've got some verbena, it's growing really well. I should mention it's basically other sun loving annuals basically they will do well especially if they're heat tolerant even better so any part to full sun annual you can't really go wrong with this plant it's pretty it's so low maintenance too it's so easy um, right here we have it growing next to this beautiful diacea which kind of needs to be cut back it's actually kind of getting a little rangy and then verbena up top and then we have sweet potato vine on each side here so all of these are similar water needs and same sun needs, and they're doing really well together. So other options for companion plants might be around other zinnias. That would be really cute to have kind of a zinnia looking flower in the front of a taller zinnia in back. And again, with these only getting about six to 12 inches tall, you want to make sure these are in front. So with these cute little bright yellow flowers, you can really pair these with just about anything, especially your favorite annuals and have a beautiful basket or container or window box or where, however you decide to use these. And one more thing, you guys, before we go, um, we wanted to mention that we got these plants at a local box store, but Proven Winners has a beautiful plant that you can probably buy online. It's called Sun Beanie. It's kind of their specialty creeping zinnia, and they have it paired with a lot of beautiful plants online. Yep, it looks very similar to this. It's just their uh, creeping zinnia that they sell. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, hey, that San Vitalia procumbens, the creeping zinnia, we hope that was helpful. You guys enjoyed that. Let us know if you have any comments or questions about this plant or anything you want to know more about that we didn't cover here. It would be great to hear from you guys. And then also uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss our future videos.